ask my questions now. And for members, we had a couple of people who are expected. So if members are either on their way or on their way to a remote question, please do so soon. Otherwise, our uh, hearing will conclude early. Um, Dr. Provocker, I wanted to, you know, this elevation of uh, OSTP to the cabinet level gives a unique opportunity for a scientist to play a larger role in shaping the public policies of the nation. And uh, I'm a big fan of, um, we live in a technology-driven economy, and so we need to have people, in, in my mind, all aspects of our government who, I'm a little down on the CEOs of companies who also aren't science-based. You know, they don't know what the next engineering um, evolution is going to be. They try to run it on a Wall Street basis, and I guarantee you that's not a recipe for success. Um, there's just so much transformation happening. If you don't have a scientist or an engineer at the top of the ranks, you're not gonna, you're not gonna see the next move. So how do you sit at the cabinet level and see the next move and communicate that across government. And let me give you an example. I'm very interested in what we do next on cybersecurity. Yeah. I feel like the amount of attacks are just escalating. It's, it's really a way of intimidation, if nothing else, by foreign governments. And the consequences could be devastating to our economy. And yet, probably every committee in the Congress has had a hearing on cybersecurity. So how do you play a role? What do you think that we should do to get a more whole of government response on cybersecurity and what can the Office of Science and Technology Policy do at the cabinet level to assure that that happens? Uh, Madam Chair, thank you for this question because I think it's, um, it, it's, that's a question that's been very much on my mind as I've thought about uh, what this role will be if I'm confirmed. I had the great honor of being in the Oval Office with the President to talk about this position uh, and to have him say to me that the reason he had made this position a cabinet level uh, role was because he viewed the uh, role of science and technology in our country and in the future to be so vitally important that he thought it needed to be elevated. Uh, and that uh, that just moved and delighted me because uh, it, it I I see that uh, in everything that we're doing. I in my private sector experience, I very much had the experience that you're describing about managing to Wall Street, which is very different than managing into the future and driving a future that we really want to create. Um, the reason I think that this uh, that that connection. Um, of science and technology at the cabinet level can actually be very effective uh, is because science and technology opens doors, but by itself, it can't do anything. And it's, it's implementation, it's acceptance, it's adoption, it's the way science and technology changes the way we operate, the way our incentives are, are established, the way our organizations work. That's when change really happens. And I think cybersecurity is in many ways a perfect example because when I think about the challenge of cybersecurity, we have this growing attack surface. It, it, for decades now, it has felt as if the, the problem is getting worse faster than we can keep up with it. And when I think about that, I see two complementary facets of dealing with it. One will always be the research that gives us better methods and more automated, more effective methods to be more secure. But without the other half, which is the implementation, we're simply not gonna get there. And how many times have you seen a report of a cybersecurity problem where when you peel it back, that organization should have patched something or they should have had a different procedure in place? It's not that they didn't know, it's that they didn't have sufficient incentives or they weren't wor worrying about it as much as they should have. And so these implementation issues are where I think that's where the rubber meets the road for science and technology. And, and my hope is, and what I would work towards if I'm confirmed in this position, is to use that cabinet position to link science and technology to the other aspects of government that so often are where a lot of the important implementation What do you think happen. that's like a roadmap? Do you think that's a, uh, a plan? I was a big fan, a very geeky report done by then Secretary Moniz called the Quadrennial Review. Yes, wonderful and, report. And that kind of report says, this is where we are as a nation. These are the things that we should go and implement as it related to energy. And basically, it was talking about the transformation that was happening, that we no longer had the same structure, even 
we didn't even have the same structure to deliver uh, what we previously had. So I, I think that in my mind, um, we have a lot of great efforts going on in cybersecurity, but it's not as it's not as cohesive as a stre strategic plan, or certainly not a um, not a constant review. So I, I think that that so you're saying you think that OSTP could play that role? Uh, yes, I think those reports can sometimes be extremely impactful. The one you described is a great example, and then I think you also have to couple it with the direct persuasion and the finding of ways to implement. And that's sometimes, as you know, that's a very human under enterprise, and I think that's something that my hope is the cabinet position would give me an opportunity to be more effective than science and technology has been in the past on, on that side of it. Thank you. Um, Senator Cruz. Uh, 